So we're busy with the word on freedom, and um, we spoke twice about done with debt, and then how God wants us to make sure that we stand fast in the liberty that He has called us to. But before we get there, I, I wanted to just speak a few words of encouragement. And we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8. And it says, in, it says there that we are hard pressed on every side. Hard pressed on every side. Bump your neighbor and say, that sounds about right. Okay, it sounds about right. On the sides, the bottom, the top, you understand. I mean, you, you know, you've been pressed. You, you pressed, hard pressed on every side. But the Bible says we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. Amen. Shout it out. Say to me, I'm not crushed. I'm not crushed. He says that I am, we are perplexed, the Bible says, but not in despair. Hallelujah. Amen. We perplexed, but not in despair. He says we persecuted, but we are not struck down. Uh, we are not uh, forsaken. We persecuted, but God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You understand, as you're going through the persecution, God is with you. Hallelujah. And then he says, we struck down, but we're not destroyed. Hallelujah. Say with me, hard pressed, but not crushed. Say with me, perplexed, but not in despair. Say with me, persecuted, but not forsaken. Say with me, struck down, but not destroyed. Say with me, struck down, but not destroyed. Set me struck down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. Bump your neighbor and say, I'm still here, baby. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm here. I'm here. We take the blows. We take the knocks. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But we're still here. And that is why we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. It says there, and since... We have the same spirit of faith. We have the same spirit of what? Faith. Of faith. You see, that's why we read the word. We go through the stuff. Why? Verse 13 says, we have the same spirit of faith. In your marriage, you and your wife, you and your husband have the same spirit of faith. In your family, as you have said, be in my house, we will serve the Lord, which means you have the same spirit of faith. That's why in my house, there isn't a different spirit. No one stays under my roof without having the same of, not the same spirit, the same spirit. Yeah, not just a spirit. Because some of them are wrong spirits. And some of us literally spirits. Hallelujah. No, not intoxicated by spirits. But filled with the spirit of faith. Not Jack Daniels, but Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, not Jack Daniels, but Jesus Christ. Can I get a same, can I get a, 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 an amen there? Some of us, we're filled with the wrong spirits. No, within your home on a Saturday. Stop being filled with the spirits of Jack Daniels, but let's get filled with the spirit of faith. Faith in whom? Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, according to his written. Listen to this. He says, I believed and therefore I spoke and also believe and therefore speak. I believed, therefore I spoke. We believe, therefore we speak. Why? We have the same spirit of faith. Here in 3C, we have the same spirit of faith. In your home, we have the same spirit of faith. Hallelujah. And in our nation, we have the same spirit of faith. We believe. I spoke because I believed and therefore I Spoke, we believe, therefore we speak. Some of us, we speak, but you don't believe. Hallelujah. Amen. No, no, no. If you don't believe, please, don't speak. Rather shut it. 
You understand? If you don't have faith, please don't talk. Please, please, please don't talk. If you don't have faith, if you don't believe, please don't talk. You talk, why? Because you believe. Say with me, I speak. Because I believe. Are you hearing me? And what are you speaking? Where are you speaking? To whom are you speaking? What are you speaking about? Is your speaking bringing around a destruction? No. We speak. We believe. Therefore. Say with me, we believe. Therefore. Say with me, we believe. Therefore we speak. And he has the key word, verse 14. He says, knowing. <laughs> That's what faith is. Faith is not a maybe. Faith is knowing. Faith is knowing. I know. I know that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise up, will raise us up with Jesus. What do I know? That he who raised Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus. Therefore, I know, say with me, I know that I know that I know that I know that he who raised Jesus will raise me up with Jesus. Amen. Amen. See, that's the faith that we have. That's why we believe. For all things are for your sakes. He says in verse 15, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving. What? Grace. What's grace? Grace is something you receive that you did not deserve. We did not deserve forgiveness, but God forgive, forgave us. We did not deserve His mercy, but God was merciful towards us. We did not deserve His kindness, but God was kind towards us. We, not, we did not deserve His favor, but God gave us His favor that rests upon us. And through the spirit of grace from many, the Bible says, what does it do? What does it do? It causes thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Can I get a big shout out to the Lord? Come on, shout out. Say, thank you, Jesus. Shout it out. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. It says there in verse 16, it says, therefore, we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. Therefore, why? Because I believe. What do we do? We believe. What do we do? We believe. Because we believe, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Hallelujah. Even though the outside is busy fading away. No, we are being renewed. We are being strengthened day by day. Hallelujah. For our light afflictions, that'd be light affliction. So whatever you go through, the Bible says it's light. It's light, which is but for a moment is working for us a far exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Because the things that are seen are temporary. Come on. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Stop looking at stuff. Stop looking at the physical. Stop looking at the temporary. Come on, somebody. Our faith doesn't come from the temporary. Are you hearing me here today? No, no, but we have a faith in the unseen. And that's why 1 John 5 and verse 4, it says, whatever is born of God. Do we have born again children of God in this place? Shout amen. He says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our our what? Faith. Our faith. Shout it out. Say with me. Our faith. Our faith. How do you overcome the world? How do you overcome the world? How do you overcome the world? Our faith. Not more money. Not a promotion. Not your health. Your what? Because then you get your health. Now what? 
If you don't have faith, then what? Then you're still a useless nobody doing nothing, living for yourself, all about me, trying to survive. Now you get your money. Now what? Now you live, spend it on yourself. It's all about me trying to look good, trying to impress people that don't even care about you. People that don't know about you, putting on an Instagram. Then you've got a whole bunch of people that, that don't even know you, don't even care. And like you just because they aren't you on their feed. Don't know you. Hello? So we need what? I can't hear you. We need what? Faith. Faith for the higher calling. Faith for the eternal. Faith that God has not just called you to exist and to survive and to be around, but God has called you to be an influence. God has called you to facilitate change and transformation. God has called you to be a world changer. He's called you to be a history maker. Can I get a big amen there? But that will only happen if you believe. Because only when you believe you can speak. If you don't believe, if you don't believe, if you don't believe, are you hearing me? Don't talk. Don't kill. Don't destroy. Lack of faith. You hearing me today? So Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by? Hearing. Faith comes by? Hearing. And hearing? The by the Word of God. Faith comes by? Hearing. hearing and? Hearing, hearing by the? Hearing. The Word of God. So the question is, what are you listening to? The question is, who are you listening to? Who's your teacher? You become who you spend your time with. That's why some of you are becoming like your social media. You're becoming who you spend your time with. How do you build your marriage? How do you build your children? If you're hanging around a bunch of guys and you're sitting there talking about women and degrading women and making jokes and sexual jokes and it's so funny. Bump your husband and say, is that true? Is that what you do at work? Ask your husband, ask him, ask him. And if he says no, he's lying. What are you discussing with your, what are you discussing with the ladies at work? What are you discussing with your girlfriends at work, ladies? What are you gossiping? What are you talking about? Bump your wife and say, yes, tell me, tell me. <laughs> ask, ask, your, ask your wife, are you talking about me? What are you talking about? Are you gossiping? Is it just faithlessness coming? Is it just coming? You're like vomiting faithlessness. It's just, it's like pus just oozing out. Is that the people you spend your time with? And then you wonder why your marriage is in a mess? You're listening to ungodly people that kill and steal, that, that curse, and, and now you're listening to their advice on marriage? Seriously? Are you hearing me? Keeping up with the Kardashians
Who are you listening to? Where do you take advice? And here's the thing, you think you laugh at it in the beginning and you think it's a joke in the beginning, but you hang around it and you start thinking like that. In the beginning, you think it's so funny, it's so outrageous, but you see, you stay with it long enough, you start thinking and it becomes your truth. And it's a big fat lie. And then you lose your faith. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. The what? The Word of God. The what? The Word of God. The what? The Word of God. Is this helping you, somebody? So we need the Word. Stop listening to this rubbish. Put the news off. Listen to the Bible. Are you hearing me? Put the Twitter off. Who are the guys? They're in positions, but they're not godly people. That doesn't form how you need to act and what you need to do and the transformation that you need to bring and you are linked to no person. Nobody's got the right over you. How you speak, how you act. That's why faith equals action. It's not reaction. When something happens, now I don't react to the circumstance. No, I look at the word, I pray, then I act. I don't react. I act on the Bible, I don't react to the circumstance. Are you hearing me here today? And many of us, we're in the life and in the mess we are because of the lack of faith, we don't believe. Everything, our life is reactionary. Something happens, we react. Something happens, we react. Something happens, we react. Something ha- so that's how the devil controls you. You understand? He brings a situation and then you react. And that's how he moves you. He starts moving you because you're a reactor rather than somebody that has faith, that believes the Bible doesn't react to circumstances because it's temporary, but you say, I believe. Amen? Amen. Amen. Psalm 37, verse 23. Therefore... Let me give you some strong word in closing to encourage you. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Can I get a big amen there? The steps of righteous people, of righteous people are ordered of the Lord and he delights in his ways. Hallelujah. Shout it out to me. God is in control of my life. Listen to verse 24. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Hallelujah. So though you fall and you're lying down and the referee's there to be counted out and the devil's got you in a grip and you're out and there you are. The devil says, the referee, come count the guy out. I got him, he's hurting, he's finished, he's done. The referee comes and goes, "Uh, oh, I can't count him out. Why? His shoulders are not on the floor. He's, he's He's not utterly cast. Down, he can't be cast down. Something's, something's holding those shoulders up. You're in a grip, you're in pain or whatever you, but you're not utterly cast down, why? His right hand will uphold you. He will keep you, he will protect you. And even though you feel that you're up, that you're down, that you're just about to be counted out, you cannot be counted out. The referee cannot count you out. Why? Because you're not utterly cast down. Your shoulders are not on the floor. You can't lose. Why? Because the hand of God is there. He's holding you. He's holding you. He's holding you. Hallelujah. And it won't be too long and you'll be able to get up and get out of that grip. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me yet today? Amen. Amen. Bump your neighbor and say, I'm still here. here. I'm still here. here. Tell your neighbor, hey, I'm here. Amen. Amen. Bump your neighbor, say, watch the space. Watch Watch the space. Tell your neighbor, don't judge me. Don't judge me. (laughs) No, don't judge me. Watch the space. It might not look good. 
But don't put your eyes on the scene. Don't be fooled by what you see. Watch the space. God has got me. God has got me in His hands. Hallelujah. Because I believe. I believe. Verse 25 says, I have been young and I have been, I've been and now am old. This is David speaking. He says, I was a young man. He says, now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging for bread. Hallelujah. Never. God's got you. God's got your back. God will help you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. God's got you. Hallelujah. Verse 26, he says, he is ever merciful and lends and his descendants are blessed. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. Just there we are, stand to your feet. Come aware of the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Grab hold onto the word of God today. I believed, therefore I spoke. Do not not speak the words of your circumstances. But we speak the Word of God. God's in control of your life. God's in control of this nation. As long as I'm here, you're okay. Bump your neighbor and say, as long as I'm here, you're all right. Don't worry. As long as I'm here. Bible says if there's one righteous, the whole tribe is made righteous. Tell your neighbor, don't worry, I'm here, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Hallelujah. Because tell your neighbor, I believe, I believe. It's because I believe. Tell your neighbor, because I believe, I will speak. Tell your neighbor, because we believe, we will speak. We will speak the Word of God. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Say to me, Father, forgive my unbelief. But Lord, I declare today, I believe, I trust you with my life, my future. We trust you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your word says that you have got us, that our steps are ordered of you and you delight in our ways. And even though we fall, we shall never be utterly cast down, Lord, because you uphold us. Even being hard pressed, We're not crushed, even though perplexed. We're not in despair, even persecuted. We're not forsaken, even struck down. We are not destroyed. Thank you, Lord. My family is in your hands. Our nation is in your hands. Our future is in your hands. Shout it out. Say, Lord, I believe. Say, be Lord, I believe. Say, be Lord, I believe. And therefore, I will speak. Say, be Lord, we believe. My family believes, and therefore we will speak. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No more faithless speaking in the name of Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe there's somebody here, you've not yet given your life to Jesus. I want you just Calling yourself Christian doesn't mean... And I want you just to think about this word, because I know some of you have come here this morning ready to give up you felt like it's too much you felt like there's no point you felt like you can't hold on and I want you to understand that in this message that God's got a message for you personally the thing is you can't help yourself the essence of the gospel is that we can't help ourselves and maybe some of us during the course of this year we've made a decision for the Lord we've made a decision to give our lives to Him but there's challenges in the economy there are problems all over And so as a result of that, maybe right now in this time you've been feeling overwhelmed and that life is just too much. Maybe you felt like giving up. And if that is your story, the Lord, the Lord is calling you here today. And He's speaking to you directly. 
and he's speaking to you lovingly and he's speaking to you personally and so I want you to think about your own life do you need to give your life to Jesus for the first time he is speaking to you personally he is saying to you that you can hold on with him <clears throat> if you've made a commitment and you've been faithful but things have been overwhelming you and the temptation to, to quit has come up in you then Jesus is speaking to you too to come and sure up your commitment to come and stand before him because you know that this today was a word in season for you and it's happened at exactly the right moment that you needed it if you've drifted from the Lord and it could be through pressure it could be through distractions but you've drifted from the Lord and you're not there where you used to be <clears throat> then Jesus might have been speaking to you as well if you've just not been living by faith faith is not how we've been able to define you you've not defined your life by faith then Jesus is speaking to you and he's telling you to come in a moment to the altar to come and stand here in front of the altar of the Lord at the foot of the cross of Jesus and to give yourself over to him and to allow him to bless you and to allow him to touch you and to allow you to experience his goodness maybe there's one or two here this morning and you thought ah this Jesus thing isn't real this gospel thing is not real but today Jesus is speaking to you and something in the service has sparked within you and you've realized that which you've always believed about Jesus not being real is wrong because you've been touched by him and Jesus is saying yes I want you to go and I want you to make a commitment right now this morning for if you don't do it this morning you never will and he's telling you in an hour or two you'll think the same way again and he's telling you as he has told many others before that something will shut down in you and you will never have this opportunity if you don't come forward today And so if the Lord has spoken to you in any of those examples or even in any other way and you're needing to come forward today just to make a commitment to Jesus then I'm inviting you to come and stand here right in front of you. If you've been trusting things other than the Lord come forward. Can we give a big round of applause for those who are coming forward? I just want to say if there's anyone else you need to come forward all right and I, and I really want you to search your heart now because the Lord has spoken to more than just these people here this morning I'm telling you as I stand there are people standing here and right now you actually you're saying no to God and the Lord is calling you to come forward and I'm not sure what your reason is for not wanting to come forward but whatever your reason is it doesn't matter if you don't come forward there will be a loss and somewhere along the line you will realize that loss the Lord is calling you forward now right now <clears throat> some others have come forward can we give them a round of applause
just one last thing. I believe the Lord's speaking right now to someone. And you're right on the edge. You're on the edge of a cliff. In fact, part of you is over the cliff. In fact, you coming to church this morning may even have been that you sort of fell over the cliff and you fell into the service and it's like you're about to bump off the service and continue down. And the Lord is saying, I am here. I will pull you back up. I will pull you back up over the edge. But you need to go forward right now. There's someone here that the Lord is saying that to. Maybe there's more than one. And so I'm just going to say you need to come. And I know the Lord is saying that to someone. Now, that requires your obedience. You've got to do what the Lord said. And He's told you to do it. And so it could be depression. It could just be life circumstances. It could be finances. Whatever it is. Can we give a big round of applause for these that have come forward? Amen. Come on, let's give a big, big cheer. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to ask all those of you that have come up and to put your right hand on your heart. And I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to picture that the place that you're standing at is the altar before Jesus. And in front of you, you see the cross and you see Jesus dying on the cross for you. He loves you so much that he died on the cross for you. He died to give you a brand new life. And he died to give you a life where it's no longer you that has to walk alone. And whatever your circumstances are, whatever you come from, maybe even your circumstances are from your own making, it doesn't matter. Jesus died for you. And let me tell you, no matter how much you've messed up, no matter how much you may have sinned, the blood of Jesus has been shed for you to cancel the debt you have before God because of your sin. And all of us, without the blood of Jesus, is a debt before God because of our sin. And Lord, the Lord right now, just open your heart to Him. He's healing even your history, even your ancestral line. He's healing the things that have been done to you. And if you open your heart to Him, He's healing your heart. And He's inviting you to surrender to Him. Because Romans chapter 12, first two verses speaks about offering yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to Him. Because only then, once you've offered yourself to Him, only then can you know the perfect, pleasing will of God. And you've got to cast aside the patterns of this world. And I want you to see Jesus doing the spiritual work right now, needed. He's changing your mind. He's filling your mind with blessings. He's filling your heart with faith because your heart is open to Him. And this same Jesus who died over 2,000 years ago on the cross for you. His work stands once and for all. And His work, work is shouting for you in heaven right now. And so your debt of sin before God is paid. It is paid in full. Which means no matter the, how much the devil may come and remind you of it in the future, it is paid. And you can tell him, devil... The Bible says your future is condemnation. The Bible says my future is heaven. Get behind me. You can say that to him with boldness. Amen. And so we're going to pray together. I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Say, Lord God, I come before you. And I acknowledge that I've been living in rebellion against you. And Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. And I claim the forgiveness that you won for me on the cross, Lord Jesus. And I apply the blood of you, that you shed for me over my life. And I believe that right now I am redeemed by your blood from all rebellion, from all sin. I pray right now that you redeem me from all sickness in my body. And I declare that by your blood, Jesus, I am cleansed, made brand new, made whole. And that by your blood, Jesus, I have been justified. And God sees me as if I've never sinned. And by your blood, Jesus, 
I am sanctified to serve you. Yes, Jesus, I can serve you from now on. And Jesus, I want to serve you. And so I open the door of my heart and I ask you to come in to be my Lord and to be my Savior. I give my heart to you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Join us for our annual G12 Africa Conference at the Moraleta Church in Twane on the 23rd and 24th of February 2024. Visit www.my3c.tv and get registered today.